Right, so for many on the left, if they've been Labour members under the regime of Keith Stalin, we've seen all kinds of pathetic reasons and excuses to rid Labour of the left, of its own party, purging people for the most ridiculous of reasons, leaving a pathetic Red Tory tribute act in its place that will change nothing for ordinary people and just maintain the status quo for vested interests, even as the country is going to hell, where we can't afford food or heating or a roof over our own heads anymore, and we're asking for a pay rise is tantamount to treason, where these basics have become unaffordable and where we're pretty much told it's our own fault for being poor. The poorest thing of all, though, is how the country is being led. And the fact that going forwards, it'll be more of the same, whether it's Sunak or Starmer, who occupies number 10 after the next election, is pretty sad. Another example of the cruelty of this country was shown on last week's uh, Sunday edition of the Not the Andrew Marsh Show, a fantastic platform for the left if you haven't seen it. Great debates to be had there, as are had every week, hosted by left-wing comedian and activist Crispin Flintoff. Now, Crispin himself has been suspended from Labour, despite him having been Secretary of Henley Constituency Labour Party. If you want a ridiculous reason, I mean a proper really stupid reason for a suspension. Crispin's is right up there. You see, Henley CLP's chair resigned, leaving Crispin as secretary, the most senior figure in the CLP. And as secretary, it was his job to then let members know that the chair had resigned, to circulate to local members that the chair had stepped down, something that they obviously needed to be made aware of, so they have an opportunity to be involved in the selection of his replacement or stand for it themselves. You would think this is obvious. Well, Crispin got suspended for circulating that information. He was literally doing his job as CLP secretary and that got him suspended. And without any irony at all, it was because of abusive, heavy-handed, factional behaviour like this that the chair had resigned in the first place. Crispin did somewhat get his own back at the party, shaming them by holding an awards show for Labour members who had later been expelled. Anyway, setting that aside for the moment, it was... Crispin's guest this week, a young man called Liam Stephen, who I would like to focus on here for a moment. Liam's story is like too many in this country right now, as so many of us can relate to. Sometimes events in our lives beyond our control can get away from us. Very easily done after 12 years of Tory austerity. Absolutely overwhelm us. And you would hope the support networks would be there for us in such instances. But of course, we know they've been devastated under this last 12 years of Tory rule. The cruelty of this country left in its place. In Liam's case, he went through a breakup, his grandfather passed away, and his job was lost, all in the space of two weeks. It's a lot for anybody to take on all in one go. He lost his job because he chose to attend his granddad's funeral, having been on probation, which is just utterly disgusting. He had a mental health crisis following all of this, couldn't work, needed help, and couldn't see where or how he would get any. Liam attempted suicide. He was sectioned and hospitalised, and this then put him behind on rent, leaving him facing eviction when he came out, made worse by the six-week wait when he applied for universal credit, which is as pointless as it is cruel. When it came to his accommodation, he was told by someone at his local council that as a young man, he was better equipped to cope with being homeless than others. As a council, normalising homelessness. It's where we are now, apparently. Just what kind of a society is this that we are living in now? And these politicians of ours want us to be proud, to be British. They could drape themselves in as many flags as they like, but this is what is going on around them. They can stick it so far where the sun doesn't shine, they can choke on it at the other end. Anyway, Liam's struggling, and not just from a health perspective. Rent, food, energy to keep warm, and as such, Crispin set up a crowdfund, because it's the kind of guy... Crispin is. He set up a crowdfund for Liam, which I've also linked to this video. I've also provided the link to the full interview between Crispin and Liam, because it's so much better to hear Liam's story directly from the man himself. So please do have a listen. Not only does it give an insight into life at the sharp end for those who might not be impacted by it themselves, a demonstration of just how far support services are lacking, have packed up or are deteriorating, but it'll also provide further context of what I'm moving on to next, which is what happened to Liam after that interview. You see, Liam is also a Labour member, and a socialist one at that, so perhaps you can see where I'm about to go with this. Immediately after the broadcast, Liam was informed he was suspended from the Labour Party for discussions and associations with previously suspended members. In other words, the Labour Party has suspended a guy who is struggling to get his life back on or in order, who despite all of that remained a committed Labour member, who was hospitalised following an attempt to take his own life for no other reason than talking to Crispin, himself suspended for that truly ridiculous reason. You have to say with this one, what kind of twisted individual in the GLU 
governance and legal unit of the Labour Party who oversee these things, having had a story of mental health taking the worst of tolls spelt out by one of their own members and thinks, OK, that's grounds for suspension. Let's kick him even further. They clearly do not care about mental health issues whatsoever, all very much secondary to the ongoing purging and really shows how little, little Labour values its members anymore. This needs rectifying immediately. Liam would never have been given a platform to talk about these issues anywhere else because mainstream media aren't interested. They've got other agendas at play. It's left up to independent media outlets, as always, like Crispin's show, to highlight them and to be punished for telling their story. It's sick, but it's Labour these days. And they need to be shamed until they fix this or it'll undermine anything they say regarding mental health going forwards. How many more of Crispin's guests going forwards Face the same thing. And how the hell is that right? Watch the interview. See how you feel about Labour afterwards. But above all else, please keep supporting the crowdfunder for Liam. It's beaten its initial target. It's only a short-term solution. But if it keeps him going until his universal credit gets sorted, hopefully his PIP application will as well, then we've done something meaningful to help a guy who really needs it, who really needs to see there are people in this country who do give a damn about each other. That's proper solidarity. That's proper Labour values. That's proper support. Frankly, it's just being human. But in Tory Britain, it's shamefully sorely lacking.